So in the last two lectures what we have, we are going to cover something called a renewal theory. So this renewal theory as we as we will see that is nothing but a slight more generalization of what the things we have already studied, okay. But uh, it kinds of captures the essence of many, uh, many applications we see in practice and also justifies uh, uh, how we can model them using some of the tools like Markov chains and also what renewal theory we are going to study uh, well. Okay. So in a way we have already touched upon renewal theory when uh, we try to study Poisson processes, right? You remember when we talked about Poisson process, we have a counting function which kind of try to count when the things happened and uh, one can usually think of a count happening as basically something happening again. For example, let us say you are building a system or you are interested in a particular component of a system. Let us say specifically you are interested in the battery of some system. When you fully charge it and put it in the machine, it is going to operate for some time and after that maybe it get discharged and some red light in that blinks and then you know that this guy has gone below, now it is not in good shape, either you need to recharge it completely or you need to replace it. You do it then it is going to work for some time and again maybe the red light blinks and now it is time for it to replace. Now you may be interested in knowing how long this guy is going to operate in the long term. So what will be the average lifetime of this battery? That is so such questions you will be interested in. and here renewing is like when you have to renew the battery or when you have to replace the battery. So such questions can arise in many, many cases, right? Not just like uh, you are uh, replacing the component. It could be even thought of like, okay, when some new event happened, you can think of something has happened. When again the next event happened, you can think that as the event has renewed. And then see, based on this, you can try to analyze what is the rate of these things renewing, what is the inter-arrival time between the renewals and all these things. So let us try to make the things formal now. Okay, let us say I have a DTM3 YN. Now based on this, I am going to define Let us say if you are going to start from a particular state y equals to i, you are going to start it from a particular state i. Now I can define x1 to be first visit to state i and I can also like this can also like, like the kth visit to state i. So let us take some i, first visit instead of that, let us say let us take some other state. I start from i and now I will be interested when is the first time I go to state j. And then k, kth return to state j. After that when I come to state j, after that I will be looking at from j I can when I go back to j for the second time and then once I hit j again when I will go back to j for the third time. 
like that. So, this x k here denotes the kth return to state j. Okay. Now, what we know? Probability that x 1 equals to m given that y naught equals to i. If we have denoted it as f i, f i j to superscript m, right? Starting from state i, when I am going to hit j for the first time, so this is the time of see what I am writing right now x1 is now the time taken to visit your state j for the first time. Okay. So, when you saw starting in state i you have taken let us say I am asking what is the probability that you take when I write x1 equals to m right that means you have taken m rounds to hit state j for the first time that is the meaning of so, this should be I should be adding the time. So, x1, xk here are denoting the time. When you start from state i, how much time you are going to take to hit state j for the first time that is x1 and once you hit state j, when you are going to again hit state j next time that is x2 like that. So, the times are denoted. So, is this now clear that this term is exactly equals to this? And after this, if I am going to say let us take any k equals to m given y naught equals to what is this going to be? So, when I say let us say when I say y naught equals to i right. So, I have started with something when I said the kth starting. Uh, so, I am going to hit to hit state j for the kth time that is the number of slots I took to return to state j is exactly equal to return to j for the kth time in m number of rounds. What is this can be or like here I really do not need to condition upon this right because when I say x m equals to m I am asking for returning to state j for the kth time in m rounds. That means before that I would have already hit state j and from state that j and here let us assume this k is greater than 2. For time being just take k equals to 2. I am asking x2 equals to m. So, it is then going to be fjj to the power m superscript m right because you already know it has hit state j and from there you want to go to the next state j again in m rounds. And now is it does it depend on what k is or this is going to be the same for all k? It is going to remain the same right once you hit state j I mean fine everything in the past I can forget and from there I want to see in how many rounds I again go to state j in m number of rounds and this is going to be that for. So, because we are already saying I am going I am going to hit uh, take m rounds to hit uh, state j for the kth round. Suppose k is going to be greater than a, we are already saying k you are asking for the kth return. That means it should have previously returned, right? Otherwise, k being greater than or equal to 2 does not make sense. So, that is why we have written these two cases separately here. Okay. Now, suppose let us consider this case x1 equals to let us say m1, x2 equals to m2 and all the way up to let us say xn equals to mn given y0 equals to r. What I am asking? I am asking starting from state i in the first in the initial round, what is the probability that you take m1 rounds to hit state j for the first time? After doing that you take another m2 rounds to again return to state j and then again like this and in the you are going to take mn rounds to hit state j for the nth time. 
So I can always write this as you can expand this. And what? And you can keep on doing this, right? So when I, so this is y not equals to i comma. So when I say y not equals to i and x1 equals to m1, what does this mean? I started with state i in the 0th round, then I hit state j for the first time in m1 rounds. And then I am asking from there, what is the probability that you are going to hit again state j in m2 rounds. So then this is does not matter here, right, because this is already telling that you have hit state j again. So can now let us try to write this. What is this quantity is going to be? You have already written this. And what is this? M? It is simply going to be M2, right, and here it is M1. Because we are asking you took exactly M2 number of rounds to hit state J again, given that you have already written to state J. Now like this, you can keep on doing this iteration and you will end up with, he is going to do this. So now if you look into this, basically this joint distribution has split as this this probability, this joint probability has split into this individual. So each time is like here a probability, right, as we have already expressed here. So now if I am going to, and you see that this joint distribution has split into the individual probabilities. What does this mean? So this means x1, x2, xn's are all independent, right? And further, if you forget the first one, look at the others. They have the same SJJ term. What does that mean? They are not only split, the probability not only split, but each of the term looks identical. That means the distribution of each of this term is same, right? They are all FJJ, right? So that means definitely this sequence, if I am going to look at this process, what is this process? This is a process of intervisit times, sorry, what is this? Uh, uh, so this is the duration of the returning, re duration of the returning to the same states, right? These are all independent. However, if you look instead of xn starting from n greater than or equals to 2, if you look at n greater than or equals to 2 or this process, what is this process is? It is not only independent now, if you look at only the sequence after n greater than or equals to 2, they are also further identical. So they are iid. This process is iid and this set of sequences are independent. Okay. What we are going to call this x henceforth as lifetimes. Okay. We call this as a lifetime process or we are going to call it as simply renewal lifetimes. Is this clear why we are calling this renewal lifetimes? My process here in this case, my process, I'm, what I'm interested in, returning back to state J, and uh, I'm looking at when I'm returning, I'm looking at how much duration I took to return. In that, in 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 the parlance of the battery example, 
we talked about when I replace a battery and I can think of when the battery dies, I am going to replace it. So, from starting point till the time it dies, that is the time duration of that I can think at a, it, it has a lifetime of that battery, right. So, so that is why we are going to call this as renewal lifetimes, okay. So, x1 is going to tell me what is the duration, what is the lifetime of my battery when I first recharge it. x2 will denote it, okay, once my battery was dead, when I recharge it again, how much time it lasted before it died again. So, in that way, these are going to talk, talk about the lifetimes of the renewals. And now, we are also going to denote Zk here. I am going to define Zk as time of kth visit to state j. I am hitting state, interested in returning to state j again and again, but uh, I may be returning to state j first time or the second time or the third time, right. I am also trying to keep track of how many times I have returned to state j. So, j k is, z k is telling me exactly at what time I return to state j for the kth time, okay. For example, in the battery case, z k can denote when is the, uh, when is that my battery died for the kth time. Right. So, every time it dies, I recharge it and uh, when is that it, it dies for the kth time, okay. Now, is there a relation between z case and x case? z k equals to sigma x i to k, right. So, x 1 denoted the time it took for the battery to die, then x2. So, basically x1 told me after how much time I replace the battery, x2 told me next time when I replace my battery. So, if you just add all of them, you will get time k when you z k time z k when you replace your battery for the kth time. Why equal? It is a random process. They are identical, but their values, their realizations could be different, right. So, here what? This x1, x2, x3, they are all random variables. Yes, it is true that x1 has the different distribution than x2, x3 and others, but uh, if you take a realization, maybe x, uh, the sample, maybe the battery. Uh, so, when you started for the first time, the battery let us say lasted for one week and died and then you recharged it and uh, then what happened? So, 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 okay, let us say. So, let us say you have a some battery, a priori you do not know in what state it is. It may be half charge, maybe quarterly charge, uh, four charge, three fourth charge, whatever it is given to you and you started using it. So, it is going to die at some time, right. And once it dies, you are going to completely recharge it and again look at when it is going to die again, okay. So, clearly the first part can have a different distribution from the second and the subsequent ones, right. Because when you initially started it, the battery was in some arbitrary state. But when you are going to recharge it, you are always recharging it when the battery completely died. And now, now, if you, even when the battery dies, when you recharge it, maybe it lasts first time for the three weeks. When it dies, you again recharge it. Maybe it, this time it went for four weeks and again you recharge it. Maybe this time it just lasted for one week. They are, because this is a realization. I am not talking about exact this, the mean value or something, right. This x1, x2 are random variables, right. So, they can take different realizations. 
So even though x1, x2 they have identical distribution, when you take a sample, so let us say x1 and x2 they have the same distribution. Take one sample from x1 and take another sample from x2. Do they need to be the same value? That is what I am saying. Okay, now based on these notations, let us define what we mean by a renewal process now. Dependent random variables with Xn being identically distributed. We are going to just call this is event of called sequence of lifetime. And we have already defined for k equals to 1, that k equals to k renewal instance for So, sigma. So, we have already see, we have already motivated this. Let us suppose we have a sequence of random variables. Let us take them to be independent. But let us take uh, the sequence starting from n greater than or equals to be identical. Then we such a process we have, when that is such a sequence we are going to call as sequence of lifetimes. And uh, Zk defined in this fashion, which is the sum of the first k xi's, we are going to define it as the renewal instance. So, Zk denotes the kth renewal instance. And now, you take a t, any real number t. Now, you define m of t, capital M of t to be supremum over k greater than or equals to 1, such that Zk is going to be less than or equals to t. So, let us understand what is this function is saying. When you give a t, it looks at all the instances when the renewal happened within the time t and takes the maximum value of that k. So, let us say, so it is, you see that, that this guy z k is a increasing, right. 
like maybe the first renewal happens at of one week, second renewal happens in the third week and the fourth renewal happens in the tenth week like that and let us say you are given some hundred today. So, you are going to take that as hundred today T hundred and look at all the renewals that has happened before that hundred day and see what is the latest renewal in that. So, if you let us say hundred day you have taken and uh, uh, 100 day corresponds to how many weeks? Let us say whatever uh, some uh, let us say on the 10th week a renewal happened and the next renewal happened only in the 20th week. Okay? So, then what is this m of t is going to be? It is going to be? So, let us say let us say t equals to 100 day I am counting them here t could be continuous, but let us take t to be 100 and let us say my uh, z 10th happened in on 89th day and and the 11th happened on 95th day and let us say and the 12th happened on 110th day. So, in that case what is m of t is going to be? it is going to be 11 right. So, it will not include this because 110 is going to be larger than 100 in this case. So, basically what this is telling is the number of renewals that has happened in the interval 0 to t right. And now this small m of t is basically looking at the expected value of this m of t. So, notice that this m of t here is a random quantity and how to interpret this m of t. So, if you give me a realization of z of k, then I can define my m of t on that. So, like I have given you one realization right, this realization could, could change and on that realization this m of t is defined and this can depending on the realization this value of m of t can also change. So, that is why this is a random quantity. And uh, now I will be taken this quantity as uh, the expectation here and this m of small m of t I am going to call it as renewal functions. Okay. Now, let us try to understand uh, each of this. Now, we have defined so many processes right. Okay. Anyway, I started with x n based on that I have defined z k and based on that I have defined m t and further small m of t. So, how do these functions look like? So, what kind of random variable x n is? x n is discrete time, but what is the value that x n take? So, a, all these x n are defined on a given y n right. You started with a DTMC y n. Okay. So, let us say DTMC y n on space some s. Let us say this s is countable infinity okay but still this markov chain is discrete timed okay now what you are doing is you are fixing a particular state and then you are looking at the time it takes to visit that state okay and again return to that state j so then in that case what is the value that xn takes but this time is in terms of the discrete value right. So, it is going to so let us say it is this x n is says okay, I took 100 slots to visit state j again or I took 20 slots to visit state j again right because this now because this y n is discrete time the number of time slots you took to go back to the state again is again in terms of this discrete counts right. So, because of this, this x n's are again discrete valued random variables. So, like uh, this x n's can take 10, 20, 30, 31, 32 whatever, but not like any value between 31 and 32. They are basically giving the count of how many slots you took 
to return to the same state again. So that is why these xn's are discrete valued. No, our our Markov chain is changing only at this discrete points, right? So it change in uh, slot, yeah. So my Markov change is changing, but our count have uh, we see the Markov chain only at the beginning, let's say at the beginning of the slot, or like we are looking it into the days. Day one, this is the value. Day two, this is the value. And day three, this is the value, and we are looking at how many days it took to go back from this particular state to this state. So, because of that, it is going to be discrete. And now, if this Xn's are discrete, what about Z case? They are also going to be discrete. So, this is again, but uh, they are discrete timed and discrete valued random variables, okay. So, so are Xn's. So, the Xn's are also they are also discrete time and discrete valued random variables. What about MK, MT? Is it uh, discrete in time or continuous in time? That case are discrete, but now I am passing to this M any real number and then asking in the interval 0 to T how many renewals happen, right? So, MT is continuous time right uh, but it is taking discrete values okay and anyway mt is simply a real number at time t because this is expected value so for every t it is defined okay so what is the meaning of m of t this is the expected number of renewals that are going to happen in the interval 0 to t okay so, is m of t is the increasing function? If I increase t, is the value of m of m of t increases? Right? This is obvious because this capital M of t is itself increasing. If you increase t, more renewals will be included in this, and m of t is going to take a larger value. Okay. So, we just saw that, so m of t is non-decreasing and uh, this is because, yeah, and what about m of t is, is non-decreasing and say that I have asked z of k to be less than or equal to. That means, I have included t in this, not the renewal just happened strictly before t. I am asking for the renewal that has happened till time t that includes t, okay. So, because of this, this function m of t is going to be right continuous, okay. So, you recall this right continuity also happened when we looked at our CDF, right? So, there we looked at probability that x is less than or equal to. So, because of that inequality thing that was turning out to be right continuous, so, so here also you can see similar things. So, non decreasing and right continuous. Now the question is, I said uh, a battery being renewed every time, right? So suppose instead of battery, let us think of I am counting some events. So when an event happened and then when the same event happens again, I am going to take the time between these two. So it may happen that sometimes instead of one event happening, uh, two events happen simultaneously. So, for example, I can think of something like, okay, I am going to treat somebody entering, let us say I have a one big queue that is being served and uh, the jobs are coming into my queue. So, jobs could be simple customers whom I need to send uh, sell tickets or whatever. So, 
a customer can enter or it may happen that a customer himself is not entering, he is entering with his family. So, it is not one person, maybe a couple is entering. So, there are actually two guys entering the system and they are entering simultaneously, right. But how I am going to count this? Both are entered simultaneously. I am going to treat them as two events actually. I am going to give two events, but going to take them that has happened simultaneously. That means, suppose one guy came and with her, her relative also came together. Let us say that guy coming was the kth event and her relative is the k plus 1th event, but the difference between them is 0. Okay? So, because of that, it may happen that when both of them happen simultaneously, zk is going to be same as zk plus 1 and Also notice that m of zk plus 1 is equals to m of zk. Because both zk and zk plus 1, so okay, when I what I mean here, when I wrote m of t right instead of t, now I have put zk plus 1 here. Zk is also some number, right? Some some basically time. Okay. Yeah. So, this is also going to be some time and now I am asking this function taking the value of this m at that particular time. Now, that both of them has happened at the same time, its value will be what? What will going to be the value of m z k plus 1? So, here replace this t by z k plus 1. What is going to be this value? k or k plus 1? It is going to be k plus 1, right? Because both z k and z k plus 1 will be included in this because they have the same time. So, because of that, these two values are going to be the same. But however, if you look at m z k plus 1 and m z k just before when I write z k minus right just before the kth arrival happened. So, what is this value we expect to be? It is going to be 2, right, because 2 count has happened. So, okay, so just to understand this, uh, let us uh, realize this. Okay, for time being, let us take this z my z is my z k process, right. M of? Yeah? No, because z k plus will also get included, right, because it will also have the same time. So, let us say one, let us take one sample. I am going to take for some particular omega. Okay, so, this is a discrete time, right. So, let us talk. So, let us say k equals to 1, k equals to 2, 3, 4 and 5, 6. So, let us say first arrival happened at some time. So, I will get some value like this. The second value happens a bit later than this. Third value is higher than this. But let us say the fourth value happens just before this and then this fifth value happens at the same as this. Okay, let us call this, this is exactly equals to x 1. Let me call this, this is some realization, right. Let me just call it t 1, this is t 2 and this is like t 3, this is let us say t 4 and this is also t 4, it is also going to remain t 4 only. Okay, now, if you are going to draw its m function, if 
I have given you one realization of my renewal instances. Based on this, can we construct how this m of t function look like? So, till t1, let us take time to be till this point t1. So, this t1 is going to be same as this t1. So, till t1, what is no z does have no renewal has happened, right? The first renewal is happening only at the t1. So, before that, there is nothing here, right? Because, but, but then in that case, it is a supreme of an empty set because there is nothing here. Yeah, yeah, we will include, but just before T1, okay, right. So, just let us consider the case just before T1. So, just before T1, there are no renewals. So, let us define that term to be 0. So, all this function is going to remain 0 till this point. And what happens exactly at T1? It is going to be 1. And now, let us take this value T2. So, let us say T2 is somewhere here. What is this wave? How this function is going to look till the point T2? It is going to remain horizontal, right? And what happens at T2? It goes to 2. And then what happens at till T3? Horizontal and again it jumps to 3. And then what happens at T4? T4 till this point. And how much will be the jump here? At T4, how much will be the jump? It is going to be 2 units, right? Because two things have happened simultaneously. So, that is why we wrote that k plus 1. So, at this point, just before this, is that k minus 1 in this case is just before this, and it is going to include two events. Okay.